Hi, I'm Rich Hoffman. This practice with my bull whips here, like I usually do on a fine morning, and I was thinking about some of these uh, economic issues for this upcoming election. And a few years ago, I did a, a video here called A Whip Trick to Save America. Sort of had some long, uh, broad, broad views on, on some of the state of the issues in the country right now. And uh, it, it, it got the point across, and you can see it by clicking uh, at the link below this video. But now, a few years later, things have become a little more specific. And uh, instead of talking about the overarching problem of the wage difference between public sector workers and private sector workers, and how that's funded with taxes and all the stuff we've covered, it, it's now time to get a little, a little a little more dynamic in, in, in talking about some of these issues. Now here in southern Ohio, the upcoming election, there's a lot of school districts that have issues on the ballot. And a lot of people are very upset about that, including me. Uh, my district of Lakota, uh, which I've you know, had a long uh, uh, duration of contention with the way they manage their district, uh, just because the imposition it places on property owners. They're asking for another levy. Uh, and like a lot of school districts, it, pretty much they all have kind of similar reasons. So if I go and explain Lakota specifically, it, it sort of umbrellas everybody else. Situation in Lakota is they're asking for a 5.5 mil levy, in addition to all the tax money we currently pay. And uh, they don't see any problem with that, uh, with that funding model and, and sustaining that into the future. 5.5 mil levy means for people in my community, uh, basically $192 per $100,000 of assessment. That's the same for residential and commercial properties. So whatever the value of that property is, if it's $100,000 to $5 million, uh, you'll pay according to that in additional taxes. And they give all the original um, emotional reasons for it. Uh, however, it's very misleading. and. I'm going to use another whip trick to articulate why they don't need a levy and why people should vote no for the upcoming levy and for all levies in all school districts. I'm going to explain something, uh, and I'll get into it more after I do the trick, uh, as to what the situation is at Lakota and what they need to do to deal with it rather than ask for taxes. So I'd like you to consider this fine can of citrus soda here as being the employees at Lakota. And I'm going to use my, my bullwhip here to explain to Lakota and to all government schools what they should be doing instead of asking for higher taxes. pretty good. Again, I'll show that to you in slow motion so you can see it again. Now, the important thing to know about this is uh, the bullwhip is an extremely dangerous weapon and you probably shouldn't use it unless you know what you're doing. As you can see, it, uh, it cuts pretty decisively when you aim it in the right direction. And this is what Lakota needs to do to their employee staff because of a report that they had conducted, which cost $20,000 uh, this year, 2013, to, uh, to understand what their financial needs are for the next 10 years. And the result of that report was that Lakota was going to have a decline in enrollment of approximately 2,300 students by the year 2022. And even though that sounds like a long way away, that averages out to about 81.1 uh, employees uh, that they need to reduce in that time frame in order to deal with the, uh, the current numbers of the projected enrollment decline. Now the raw reasons the enrollment's declining in Lakota is because it's, a, it's an affluent district. Um, the average age of the person who owns property in Lakota 
uh, the Liberty Township, Westchester areas, are about 40.1 years of age. And that essentially means that uh, people who have children and children child raising years aren't able, aren't living here. Uh, people who are, are a little further along in their careers and their life are the ones who can afford to have two, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar homes. Uh, so parents with child age students um, that would go to Lakota, they're they're not able to, to move into the area. So that, that's a lot of the reason for the decline in enrollment. The other thing is just the, the demographic nature of uh, decline when people weren't having children as early and all that kind of thing. It all factors in. And so Lakota is looking at their basic funding model and saying it's always going to be the way it's always been. They have a 2014 teacher contract that's coming up in uh, June of next year. And they essentially need this levy so they can throw money at the teachers union through the collective bargaining agreement. And honestly, as a taxpaying resident of this community, I don't want to pay for a collective bargaining agreement with the union. I don't support them. I don't want anything to do with them. Uh, and they're asking this community to pay uh, a lot of money extra for and, and in taxes for something that they don't support and, and really mismanaged. Uh, you can't manage a collective bargaining agreement. That's why in the private sector a lot of these companies fail and only in government is, are these unions functioning and they're just driving up costs because they have a monopoly on the system. What Lakota needs to do is this. They need to cut their employee base uh, to reflect their enrollment numbers. If you have 27 kids per classroom approximately, uh, if you reduce 2,300 students over the course of the decade, you need to cut about 81 employees, which saves about $5.1 million just in the salary at $60,000 a year. The salary, not including the benefits, not including the administrators it takes to manage those 81 teachers. Uh, the total savings for Lakota could be somewhere between 10 and 15 million dollars by the time you have all the costs and can consolidate buildings because they have 22 buildings right now. Um, that's what you have to do to manage costs. But however, because it's a government school, they don't think that they need to do this. They always want to grow, perpetually grow, forever. And uh, that's just not something that I'm going to support. I will never support that kind of model uh, as long as there's collective bargaining agreements that have everybody making the same amount of money, averaging you know, up $60,000, $70,000 a year for a job that is you know, questionable whether it has that value. I'm sure a few people in that employee pool are, are of that value, but certainly not everybody. And, uh, so that's what all these schools are facing, and specifically Lakota. And instead of dealing with that problem and doing this, they just want to throw more money uh, and keep adding to it and just throw more employees at the situation until they, uh, for some infinite period of time, who knows how long they think it goes on, I guess till they retire. But it's our job, uh, if, you, if you look at the situation in Detroit, um, where they've just filed bankruptcy as a city, the situation that's up and coming in Chicago very very similar uh, they will be filing bankruptcy at some time in the very near future probably within a few years of this video and sh and uh, the whole state of california is is on that path because nobody wants to do this nobody wants to direct uh, targeted cuts where they need them uh, they have contracts with these unions that don't allow administration to do it leaving them only to ask for more tax money which cripples the economies of the districts that are supposed to fund them and it, it can't go on. So as far as the elections, I'm not going to tell you how to vote and, and what to do. I'll be voting no until these kinds of arrangements uh, are implemented and controlled costs are, are directed where they need to be. And uh, there simply isn't any other option as far as I'm concerned. So I hope this uh, cleared things up for you. I, uh, I enjoy doing these kinds of things. It simplifies the matter. Um, you can uh, see more about me at, uh, at Twitter, at Overman Warrior. Uh, look me up, Rich Hoffman. 
uh, indicate the, the link here. And uh, this is, uh, you know, I'm not speaking on behalf of any group, any Tea Party group, any, any anti-tax group. Just myself, uh, practicing in my backyard, doing what I like to do, and kind of thinking about all these complicated problems and putting them in a way that makes it easy to understand. Because there's a lot of rhetoric that goes around and a lot of very uh, high-priced public relations professionals that uh, are designed to put spin on issues and pull emotion into the topic. Uh, but that doesn't help us regulate costs. And if you don't do this, everything that has the government attached to it will become like Detroit. And I don't want my community to become like Detroit. I don't want any managed costs to destroy it. I like to see a thriving uh, economy. I like to see thriving, happy people. And that's what I intend to fight for, to make sure that my district, my school, uh, my community, my city maintains. Uh, there simply isn't any other option as far as I'm concerned. So I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, remember to vote in November, however you decide to vote. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.